you know, I want to thank you again for really being here today. And, uh, you know, this is a, a special event for us uh, for many, many reasons, and it certainly was well uh, summarized by Jim and Judy. And, you know, I want to tell you that, uh, like, when all this is a CME rate event, um, and you can turn off the CME video for right for my, my talk right now. No, don't worry. You can just you can eliminate it at some point down the road. But I have no disclosures. But the disclosure that I do have, and this has been a very important week in, in the history of our institution and for the folks here today, is that my disclosure is really I love what I do, and I love taking care of patients with this problem, and I love where I work. Um, and I, I couldn't do this without the people that are here today. And they're all in the audience, the nurses, the anesthesiologists, the oncologists, the radiation oncologists, the, my surgical colleagues who, you don't do this alone. You do it with a team. And I, there's no finer team than that, uh, that we have here. You know, you know you're right now in the, uh, uh, this is our hospital. This is Han University Hospital. It's been here since the, the turn, before the turn of the 20th century. Uh, this is the hospital. This is where you are right now, a new college building in Drexel College of Medicine, the Geary uh, B, Geary Auditorium. And we're ready. And gathered today, we're ready to take on a challenge. And, and that challenge is important. And that challenge is appendiceal cancer. I want you to take a look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, your eyes will never see what your mind does not know. Again, your eyes will never see what your mind does not know. Why? Because appendiceal cancer is rare. It's never on the radar screen, and when it comes on the radar screen, the issue is really what to do. There's inconsistency, there's non-standardization. You know, we don't know what to do, and it comes around so infrequently, uh, and usually to other hospitals, that you know, the first move is probably the most important move. We're here to actually try to build your knowledge, to take you where we've gone for the past 10 years, where, where we are now, which has been remarkable advances, and, and you're going to hear some fantastic speakers. We're going to, that's your task today, and that's really today what your journey is. Uh, you're, this is a sportscaster, Stuart Scott, you may have known him a couple of years ago, an ESPN uh, analyst who battled appendiceal cancer, and he wrote a really great book. And he really said, he really states it here, this whole fight, this journey thing is not solo. It's not a solo venture. This is something that requires support. And that support comes in many forms, but it largely comes from the ACPMP Research Foundation. You know, they, they make it happen. They made this happen. They make the, the Father's Day walk happen. They make every other event happen. Uh, without them, we're not going to, we're not going to move forward. And I really want to, Give a shout out to the ACPMP Research Foundation again for being here. Nice round of applause. And you know, they're everywhere. And we were at the regional perfusion meeting, and here's Lauren Smith uh, helping us, uh, you know, put, putting up our, our banner and getting everybody here and making aware that we're having the symposium today. And I, I thank Lauren for doing that and, and joining, the, joining the effort. You know, surgery is a really big deal, and it takes a lot. Um, and it takes a team, you know, and that is a team, like I said, you don't do this by yourself, you know, yeah. this is a team that, you know, we take, make a list, check it twice. We dot the I's and cross the T's. The folks that you see sitting here are the folks that make and orchestrate this into an organized ballet. That's what the operating theater is, that's what we've developed because of the folks that are here and the nurses. Not only here in the morning, but as we all know, these could be a very long, op very long operations, also at night. They're always there, backing and supporting. Very, very important. Now, we're here to talk about, you know, surgery plays a very big role. You know, many patients come to myself and all the in mem distinguished members of this audience uh, and asking about heat intraperitoneal chemotherapy, otherwise known HIPEC. It's, you know, the HIPEC is really the umbrella term. You know, that's a, something which as an adjuvant to good surgery. In good surgery, you're going to hear this today from some of our world-renowned speakers, Dr. Escoval, Dr. Sugarbaker, you know, it's really, it's about standardizing. Standardizing who we operate on. Who should maybe get treatment before, or who should get surgery, and then treatment after, or no treatment. Those are the questions that we're going to discuss today. And not to mention, what, is, what operations should we do? Standardizing those operations. Very important when we're looking at this and moving forward uh, with, with, with how we approach this and optimizing outcomes for our patients. 
anesthesia, I think I always, I have the, the easy part. I think the anesthesiologists uh, have the hard part. You know, they take care of the patient when they enter the operating room. Um, you know, these, uh, you know, Dr. Zabrower, who really sort of led, the, led the way with this, and everybody else uh, that you can see listed here, uh, I know Aaron Tracy is here, Mia and Ahmad, uh, Mike DeAngelis, and Dr. Rowe, we, we have, uh, we, we spend a lot of time huddling and discussing what to do, discussing what's the best pain control. Is it epidural? Is it a, is it a local approach? Uh, what's the type of fluid we have? We used to give a lot of fluid, now we give a little, little, very little fluid. When do we extubate? We extubate immediately. We want you up walking the next day. That is a coordinated effort, coordinated effort between the surgeons and the anesthesiologists. And uh, without them, we couldn't be doing what we're doing. I spend, I spend a lot of time within the operating room, but getting you through the operation and getting you out of the, out, out of the hospital is all about nursing. Well, when you, after you have your operation, you're going to go to our ICU and you're going to be met by Elzbieta Kowalski and she's presented here at a previous uh, symposium and she's got a great team of nurses and we, you know, I call it the rule of twos, two days in the ICU and then two weeks or so or less and we're breaking that rule now, we're seeing patients probably spending less than about a one week in the hospital, um, but Elzbieta and her team really make it happen. And, but the majority of times we're going to be spent up, up, on, up on our 19th floor, uh, Marianne Barra, who is here today uh, with her team of nurses and our step-down unit and our floor, really take care of, wonderful care of our patients. They get them ready and get them, mobilize everything so they can get out of the hospital and plan for their care outside of the hospital. On our brochure today, you will read Innovations in Radiology and Pathology to Help Diagnose PNP and Appendiceal Cancer. You know, you know, as a surgeon, and I always tell my, my, my residents and students, you need to be a closet radiologist. And I think it's ever so important, but nothing ever replaces the radiologist. I spent a lot of time in the dark room. Dr. Treblev is in the back uh, with his team, with Sherry Shang talking about MRI, and Brian Bianco, Jonathan's here, Lawrence, you know, Doug, uh, and Dr. Heisel, uh, who I spent a lot of time going over these things with. That you know, it's all about it's all about making choices, and radiology is looking into that black box. You know, it's. You know, here is a, a case where we would, you know, we see obvious amount of disease burden. That's not the big challenge. It is a challenge, but the challenge is when it becomes more subtle. What do you do here when it's less subtle? A patient for like, like this referred to me, was told that they had a negative, a negative CT scan. At the end of the day, it wasn't quite so negative. Even more of a challenge, and I was talking with uh, Ed, Dr. Siegel, who's going to be presenting today and talking about the advances, what do we do here with a high-grade cancer when you don't see anything? You know, the advances in radiology, Dr. Siegel, we're going to present to you today are going to shed light on what's the best imaging, what's better, best for you, given the type of disease that you have. Pathology, um, I come from a training program where they say the pathologist speaks the truth, and they, they do speak the truth. And at the end of the day, it's all about the pathology. Uh, Dr. Beth Maypow is going to be presenting and talking about, you know, the classifications of appendiceal cancer and PMP. You know, they seem to change weekly. I mean, these are just a couple of them. Uh, I, I've been in a number of conferences, and I've heard Dr. Escoval, you know, it seems to change. What's the, what is the truth? And we're, we hear the Ronay classification, the Bradley classification, the Mizrazi classification, the Loji classification, and I'm sure there's many classifications I'm leaving out right now, but I'm sure Beth, no pressure, Beth, um, is, uh, is going to straighten that all out for us today. Now, oncology. Again, I've been at a number of conferences, and I, I, Dr. Sugarbaker and Dr. Escoval would reach out into the audience and say, how many oncologists are here today? And as Jim pointed out, we got one and a half, but raise your hands. How many oncologists, turn around, how many oncologists do we have today that are here? Number of oncologists. We have number of oncologists. We have oncology fellows here who are afraid to raise their hand. But the oncologists are the glue that make this paradigm work. You know, they, the patients usually go to the oncologists. And to drive this treatment paradigm forward, it's going to require collaboration with the surgeon. And together with the oncologist, we make our team. It's a very important team. And without this team, we're not going to move this treatment paradigm forward. And we have a great team, and many of them are here today. You know, Renee Rubin, as you can see, Mike Styler, 
uh, Dr. McCormick, Yasha Rubin, Jean Kane, who raised her, who heroically raised her hand in the back. It's a great team of, uh, of specialists that help us with the patients in a great collaboration move their treatment forward. So why are we here today? We are here today to answer questions, and questions come through research. And as, you, as you're walking in, and three days from now, we're going to be having the Nobel Prize winner in medicine, James Allison, who's going to be talking about his, the enormous achievements in immunotherapy. That's where everything is going today. And I'm, I'm really privileged and pleased to really, really talk about immunotherapy today. We have Steve Katz from Boston University, and, uh, uh, and Thomas Karasik from the University of Pennsylvania are going to be talking about the enormous advancements in some of the clinical trials that are going on right in your backyard here in Philadelphia. You need to know this. This is must see and must hear. You know, we talked about research and uh, the ACPMP Research Foundation really were the springboard towards where we are today in terms of research at Drexel University College of Medicine and elsewhere with all, with a million plus dollars of uh, money that they've dedicated towards this challenge. You know, we, we look, we're looking at preventing this. You know, we found a way through, our, through what the ACPMP has helped us with, with even trying to, looking at ways for prevention, looking at pendicillin mucosils. I know we're going to be talking about that today. What do you do when you see this? The game, this could be the game changer here. What happens at the local hospital or our hospital when, when your CAT scan comes up and it shows this? How do you, how do you deal with this? As we know, appendix mucin neoplasms, you can see the mucus in there. We want to keep this organ confined. And if it spreads, it can develop into the PMP syndrome. You know, Bill Morano, who's going to be talking later today, put together a nice study looking at the world, world experience at this and, and helped us with, here's an algorithm with what to do. And I'm sure we're going to address that today at some point with Dr. Sugarbaker's talk. What drugs do we use? And this is the latest and greatest. We talk about clinical trials, but we're now in the era of personalized medicine. And we do this with molecular profiling. Targeting targetable targets. And with, with our association with, with, uh, with Caris and with our, our leadership and our, and our pathologists here, we have put together a, really the largest study looking at targetable targets for appendix PMP. And Liz Gleason's going to be talking about that. We test these drugs in animal models, which we're developing in the laboratory with advanced disease, and we're able to follow tumor burden. Now, hopefully to decrease the tumor burden, which we're seeing with many of the drugs that we're testing right now. But what's the best way to deliver this? And quite frankly, the, the work that we were funded for by the ACPMB Research Foundation looked at nanoparticles. Slippery nanoparticles. That's where we have adjusted the surface of, the, of, the, of, the, of these pegylated particles. We develop a platform for delivering heat cancer to these mucin reducing cancer cells within that sea of mucin. This is a platform that Marion Kalili is going to discuss today, and we certainly hope that we're going to be able to load these nanoparticles up with chemotherapy and then to tackle these, tumor, these mucin producing uh, cancer cells. And then we're going to go global. We're going to have Bill Morano, who's uh, just back from his uh, surgical oncology uh, interviews, talk about his experience at, the, uh, at SOGI, the Paranormal Services Oncology Group International, and some published work that he looked at clinical trials, and where we are today, specifically looking at appendicillin cancer and other immune producing colon cancers. And then, at the end of the day, what is the perfect trial? I don't think we've had the perfect trial yet, and I'm certainly going to want to see what Dr. Sugarbaker and Escaval and all our oncologists have to say here, but I don't think we've had that yet, and there's reasons for not having that, and we need to have that for the oncologists in the room. We need, we need to have your buy-in. So where are we in, in, our two, in 2019, our journey today? I think we could say now, 10 years after the fact, since 2008, the inception of the acp Research Foundation, we are able to say we have a multidisciplinary approach to the treatment of this, of this disease and this problem. That's where we are today. We have a, lot, a long way to go. Our goal today is very simple. It's to answer your questions, number one. Two, to emphasize a collaborative multidisciplinary approach. Education and research are key. And for the patients, we're going to empower you through knowledge. With knowledge comes power. And ability to make decisions. And that's why you're here today. And that's what we're going to hope, hope, help you with helping you with the, 
gaining the knowledge to make those decisions and make good choices. All about making good choices. We've had some great patient perspectives in the, in the past. We, you know, even Bigham, who looks wonderful today. Even, where, where are you? Right, where are you? Right, where, where's Yvonne Bigham? Were you still here? There you are. Okay. And we had Dan Kugler talk about, uh, been here giving his patient perspective. Um, but there's one patient perspective uh, that I really, really encapsulates my experience and my journey at, 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 uh, at Drexel Hahnemann is this patient, uh, Kate. And everybody knows her here, her husband Keith and her four wonderful children, diagnosed in 2008. Multiple operations, multiple treatments. That multidisciplinary ring that I showed you, she has been, been impacted by every one of those components in that treatment uh, paradigm as a result of the great work by the ACMPP Research Foundation and everybody in this room. Um, I begged her to come. She's just got, just got out of the hospital. Um, but she just uh, wanted me to just share thoughts that they keep the team going, keep the work, and never give up. And we are not going to give up. And, and I'm glad you guys are all here today. And I think we have a wonderful symposium. We're going to try to keep it on time for you. And let's get, let's get rolling. We, I'll, I'll give you all a, a, a wristband with an orange wristband. And we have four hours. I'd like to think that we are the epicenter at least in Philadelphia, in Geary B. Auditorium, Saturday, April 6, 2019, for moving this treatment paradigm forward. So everybody raise your hand and wage hope. Four hours today. Give me four hours. Give us four hours. We're not going to disappoint you. Thank you very much.